Hi there, uh, welcome to your virtual work experience. Uh, my name is Nat, I'm one of the FY2s. I'm Talia, I'm one of the FY1s. And we are currently on our receiving week at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Glasgow. Uh, and basically that's a Monday to Sunday, five out of seven of them are 12 hour shifts, so it's pretty, pretty heavy going. Um, what we do is we see patients that have come through from either a &E or that have come up as GP referrals. Uh, we clerk them in. Um, so basically what we do is we take bloods, have a look at their bloods, have a look at chest x-rays, ECGs, take a history, examine the patient and come up with a management plan. Uh, and then we run that by the consultant and wait for this plus to go past. We run that by the consultant um, who then makes any slight tweaks to it uh, and then we basically see the patient safely upstairs to one of the wards and make any referrals we need to. As an FI1 on receiving, you are part of the arrest team, so you carry the arrest page. So if there's any arrest in the hospital, this will go off and you go to the point. You have your backpack full of all of your necessary personal protective equipment and important things that you're going to need. The main aim as an FI1 is to gain vascular access. So your focus is gaining access by the veins. So putting in cannulas, doing blood gases, all that fun stuff. So you'll be carrying this around. So we've just seen a lady that's been sent round from a uh, and &E. uh, She's an elderly lady who was just started on ibuprofen, which is an inflammatory drug. Uh, this was for just ankle pain that's kind of chronic, but she wanted to try and get on top of it. And for the past few days, she's felt more tired, more kind of dry, difficulty swallowing just because she's got such a dry throat and she's been quite unsteady in her feet. So she's come up for assessment. So we've just went through the clark in process of looking at her bloods, looking at her past medical history, having a chat with her, an examination, and looking through her medications to see what could have caused this uh, and what we're going to do about it. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to talk you through is... So I'm going to talk you through the process of medic medicine reconciliation, um, which is a big part of the kind of FY1, FY2 job. So what we do when patients come through the door, what we want to do is get an accurate record of what they're taking medication-wise. So we would ask the patient first of all, we could also check with family members, with GPs and with GP records, which is what you're seeing here. And we want to see what drugs they normally take and what we want to continue, what we want to withhold for a few days and what we want to stop altogether given the presentation. So this lady's presented very dry, very lethargic um, a few days after starting ibuprofen and what we found in our bloods is something called an acute kidney injury where the kidneys basically don't filter blood as well as they usually would and so we see it in the blood tests and there's a few causes as to why this can happen and um, one of the big things that we look out for is drugs that can cause this so actually the ibuprofen that she was started on a few days ago is a major cause of acute kidney injury so we want to stop that altogether uh, there's other drugs that are kind of dangerous or can make acute kidney injury worse so she's been on ramipril which is um, a blood pressure tablet um, but it can also affect the kidneys so we want to closely monitor that probably withhold it for a couple of days just until our kidney function gets better and then we want to look through the rest of our medication just see if there's any interactions um, any interactions with any drugs we're starting for any other treatment um, and then we write them on a cardex and get them prescribed and given to her and then we're just going to take you through uh, the Clarkin booklet very quickly so it's got all the prompts and what questions to ask when you're going to see a patient and examine them. So you want to talk about the presenting complaints, so if they've come in with seizures, or if they're coming with a sore head or palpitations. The history of the presenting complaint, uh, so you want to ask how long it's been going on for, when it started, what makes it better or worse. If there's a pain, ask how bad is it on a scale of 1 to 10, if you've ever had anything like this before. Uh, then we check past medical history, if there's anything relevant that we need to know about what's happened to them in the past, any operations, any medical conditions. And then systemic inquiries, so just asking kind of head to toe of any other relevant findings. So if they've had fevers, if they've had problems with their waterworks, or if they've had problems with their bowels. And then if you go over the page, there's the medicine reconciliation, which we already talked about. Um, and then there's a very important kind of social history uh, that we ask them about smoking and we're in a respiratory ward so that's very important about how much they've smoked because that can damage the lungs. We ask them about alcohol, we ask them about any recreational drugs they use. Driving status can be very important if they've had any heart issues, if they've come in with seizures. 
And social circumstance is really important as well because it allows us to prepare kind of safely for discharge, wanting to know who's at home with them, if they have any carers, if they have any kind of occupations that could have led to this presentation, etc. Uh, put in our general examination findings from the observations from the nurses and then a genetic exam where we kind of listen to the chest, listen to the lungs, see if we can hear anything, have a feel of the tummy to see if the patient's in pain anywhere, feel if we can, if there's any kind of large organs we can feel like big livers or big spleens, have a listen to the heart to make sure there's no murmurs, make sure there's no um, edema anywhere which is kind of swelling um, of water. Um, say in the ankles of the legs um, want to see how well they can walk about um, and then a, a neurological examination um, so basically check they're orientated they're not confused they can obey commands they can they're open their eyes spontaneously um, and we also want to check kind of tone power coordination sensation in their limbs to make sure there's no kind of acute stroke or anything like that going on and also to get a baseline for if they deteriorate later in the presentation someone can look back and see what they were previously then just basic things like putting down what we see in their x-ray and their ECG their tracing of their heart and then coming up with a differential diagnosis uh, and then a brief management plan and then the consultant will come in and tell us whether we're right or whether we're completely off the mark and then we can learn from it hello again um, so we're just back from doing um, a procedure uh, called a lumbar puncture uh, that's just one of the more kind of fun and interesting things you get to do in receiving rather than just seeing patients and clerking them in and taking bloods etc. Uh, and because I've had some experience doing them in my last job, uh, I watched Talia, the FY1, do them um, and then she can send me kind of portfolio stuff that I can fill in and I'll hand over to her to explain. So we did a lumbar puncture today on a gentleman who presented to ARU1, which is the acute receiving pod that we're working with. In he came in with a sudden onset headache. Now in an individual who's quite fit and healthy, we really want to rule out something that we call a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a bleed in the brain. So what we wanted to do first was scan his brain. So he had a CT head, which showed absolutely no abnormality. But unfortunately, this can't rule out something like a subarachnoid hemorrhage. So the next best intervention and investigation for him would have been an LP. This just involves inserting a small needle into the space around the spinal cord and collecting some of the cerebral spinal fluid and then sending that off for testing. So that was quite an exciting thing for me as an FY1 to do under Nat's guidance and it really sounds quite complex, quite scary especially for the patients but I think it's something that we do quite routinely nowadays and it's always good to practice these things. Yeah. And she was very good at it. She was very good at reassuring the patient throughout, uh, gaining consent, um, and again demonstrating a lot of the kind of a lot of the job is patient communication and reassurance. And you do get to do some cool practical things from time to time, rather than just taking bloods and putting in cannulas. Hi again, Nat and Talia here. Uh, so our plan was to video throughout the day and update you with what's going on. Unfortunately, like most days in medicine, it was quite busy, so we didn't really get a chance. So this is about quarter to nine, so just before the evening handover. Um, and we'll maybe just take you through the most kind of interesting and time consuming um, part of the day. So a patient presented with um, an acute hyperactive delirium, which is basically an imbalance of chemicals in the brain um, due to probable underlying infection. Um, and it's caused her to have hallucinations and delusions. Um, we tried to calm her down by talking to her, we tried to encourage her to take oral medication that would calm her down. Um, unfortunately, she became a danger to herself and both staff and other patients. Uh, so we had to detain her under the Mental Health Act um, and basically sedate her with intramuscular medicine. Um, she's much safer and calmer now um, and we'll be able to give her the treatment she needs. Uh, and in order to do that, we've had to liaise with other healthcare professionals. So I'll take over to Talia. So doing something like this is always going to involve multiple kind of bits of members of the MDT. So it's a team effort, not just from our end, but we also have to chat with liaison psychiatry on call. So that was kind of my job. And we also had a discussion with the mental health officer just to make sure that they understood the situation and what was going on and knew that the patient was quite distressed as well. So 
it's always a bit of teamwork, always takes a lot of discussions with consultants and with other type team members, but at the end of the day, it's for the patient's benefit. So the other main aspect of kind of dealing with that patient's case is that our family were obviously very distressed, so it involved chatting to them, um, making sure that they knew it was a, a very acute thing and it would more than likely resolve, thanking them for their help um, and kind of looking after the patient. Uh, and really it is just reassurance um, and discussing with families is something that's um, quite a big part of the job in FY2. FY1 tends to be more kind of technical stuff like taking bloods and making phone calls. All um, of the fun things. All of the fun things, we've all been through it. Um, so we're now going to go to handover uh, to let our night shift colleagues know about any unwell patients, um, just to give them a heads up. Uh, any outstanding jobs, um, so if, for example, any ECGs or um, bloods that need to be taken through the night and any blood results that need to be chased. Uh, and we'll wish them good luck and see them in the morning. Bye. Bye. Hello, Nat again, FY2. Talia, everyone. And we are finally finished our seven days on uh, acute receiving, five of which have been 12 hour shifts, two of which have been normal short day, what, eight hour shifts. Uh, we're very tired, but we've had a very productive week. We've learned lots, we've done lots of procedures, and we can't wait to go to our bed and get food and have a long lie in tomorrow for a day off. See you later. Bye.